Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to go through how to understand our market diagram when we have a monopoly and we also have a negative consumption externality. And I'll also go through dead weight loss. So on the diagram that I have on the screen here, I have a standard monopoly outcome. So the monopolist produces Q star units and sells each unit for P star. Now what's important to know about this diagram is that the curves here that track the costs of production, that's our marginal cost curve, and the benefits of consumption, that's tracked by our demand curve or our marginal benefit curve, well these curves only cover what we call the private costs of production and the private benefits of consumption. So our demand or our marginal benefit curve tracks how much benefit a consumer gets because they're consuming a good and the marginal cost curve tracks the private cost that is incurred by the producer. So how much a good costs to produce. In contrast, externalities are costs or benefits that are afforded to or borne by a third party, so neither the producer or consumer. And just to make this clear that these curves only track the private costs and benefits, I'll just add in on the diagram that marginal benefit is marginal private benefit, which is MPB, and marginal cost is marginal private cost, so that's MPC. When we have a negative externality in consumption, it's the consumption of a good that is harmful or costly to a third party. So the classic example is smoking. In consuming a cigarette, I produce secondhand smoke that can be inhaled by others and that can harm them. Now, in order to include this externality on our diagram, we need to introduce what we call our marginal social benefit function. And my marginal social benefit function tracks the sum of all of the benefits from consumption for each marginal unit consumed. So that's going to be the benefit afforded to the consumer for each unit that they consume. And that's our marginal private benefit, like we said before. Plus, we account for any externalities that arise from consumption. We also have our marginal social cost function and that tracks the sum of all of the costs of production. So not just the costs afforded to the producer, that's our marginal private cost, but also any externalities that arise from production. Because our externality is associated with consumption, we're going to include it in our marginal social benefit function and then our marginal social benefit curve. In our case, this externality is negative, so it's harmful, so I'm going to treat it as a negative benefit. And it actually follows from this that our marginal social benefit curve is going to lie below our demand curve, so maybe something like this. And just to illustrate the interpretation just for one quantity, let's say the Q prime unit, for instance, where we can read up the private benefit afforded to the consumer when they consume that unit is just this level here coming straight from our demand. And the marginal social benefit for that Q prime unit, well, that's here. We read that off our marginal social benefit curve and it's lower than our marginal private benefit level because we've taken away that negative externality. Now, the gap between the two levels the difference between them, that's going to be the value of the externality, which is an external cost in, in, in this case, or a negative benefit. That's the value of the harm that's associated with the consumption of that particular unit. So that's how we include our negative consumption externalities on our diagram. The most common thing that we do with a diagram like this is think about market failure. So we think about dead weight loss. And usually we say that a market is working efficiently when we produce where the marginal benefit of consumption is equal to marginal cost. And at this level, we're exhausting all of the levels of production where our benefits are higher than our costs and we're not producing where our costs are higher than benefits. When we have externalities, we want this equality to be our social curves. So where the marginal social benefit is equal to the marginal social cost. And this level of production is what I'm going to call our social optimum. When we think about dead weight loss associated with a monopoly when there are externalities, we're going to think about levels of production that deviate from this social optimum. Now, typically also when we have an externality in consumption, we just assume that there's no externality in production. 
And that means that the marginal private cost function will be equal to our marginal social cost function because this production externality is equal to zero. And also that our marginal private cost curve, well, that's equal to our marginal social cost curve. And so to find our social optimum, that's where marginal social benefit is equal to marginal social cost. It's actually just at the intersection here of our green line, that's our marginal social benefit curve, and our marginal private cost curve, because it's equal to marginal social cost. I'm going to call the quantity associated with that intersection Q optimal. Now, since our monopoly produces Q star, which is less than Q optimal, we do have some dead weight loss, which is the red area here. We can explain the deadweight loss by noting that from Q star to Q optimum, the marginal social benefit of consumption is greater than the marginal social cost of production, but we haven't produced. So the benefits are higher than the cost, but the monopoly has not produced those units. So we've underproduced relative to the social optimum. With the negative consumption externality, however, I could have drawn it differently. If I had a more severe external negative benefit, something like this for instance our social optimum would be over here and q optimum is less than q star so less than the monopoly output the dead weight loss in this case would be here and the reason why we have dead weight loss here is because for the units between q optimum and q star the marginal social cost is greater than the marginal social benefit but the monopolist has still produced those units Lastly, we could get a case like this where Q star is equal to Q optimum. And in this case, there would be no dead weight loss associated with the monopoly outcome. Then monopolist would be producing the, the social optimum. And that's really it for this video. I do have some other videos on other sorts of externalities. I've published one other one so far and I'll, I'll publish hopefully a few more in the next few days. I'll link to them below. There was also quite a bit of presumed knowledge in this video. I'll link to some other videos that explain at least some of that stuff. In any case, I hope that it helped. If it did, please like and subscribe. Hope you guys are keeping happy and safe.